So I assume you already installed uh, QM UKVM as well as Vert Manager, since that's what we're going to be using today. What we want to do is come and look at this website, very nice website telling you how to install the Vert IO drivers and also the page on which you can download those drivers from, which is this official Fedora Vert IO driver download page. We click on that and then over here we've got another link which takes us to a README markdown file. And the one that we want is this stable Vert IO Win ISO. Now, if you click on that, it'll do the download. As you can see down here, I've already done this download. So we don't have to wait for that to happen. And if we go back to our first page, and uh, now we'll create a new virtual machine. You, uh, as far as I know, you can uh, convert an existing virtual machine, but there's a little bit more work involved. But we're going to be creating one from scratch. So if we say a new machine, we're going to be using an ISO file for it. So we go to forward. Um, you go select wherever your ISO file is. You know, come search for it. Browse local, search for it, and uh, forward on that. It detects that it's Windows 10. I don't have much RAM on this computer, so I'm just going to give it approximately six gig. And uh, CPUs. This is a quad core, uh, hyper threaded. So therefore, eight virtual cores. So I'm going to give it all eight. Now, at this point, I'm going to select create a custom storage. All right, I'm not going to just create a new one here based on the recommendations here. So I select or create custom storage and then manage. Now, at this point, you can create yourself a new pool. I think I've got one here already. Uh, where did I create my pool? Um, I can't remember. We can use this one. So I'm putting it on a different hard drive. Uh, where did I create this? So I don't know where I created this. So let's just create a new one. Okay, so we're going to create a new pool. I'm going to call it test pool. And it is a file system directory. And the path that I want to put it on, this is the path on which my main operating system is running. I want to put it onto a separate hard drive. So I go to browse and other locations in my case. And I go to my other hard drive. And I'm going to create a directory here. And let's just call it uh, test. So it creates that and we say open and we accept finish. In this test pool, we want to create a new volume. Now, this is an important point as well. Uh, the default is uh, QCOW2. I'm not going to be using that. I'm going to be using RAW. Okay, RAW gives you the fastest um, access to your hard drive. If you, as far as I remember with uh, RAWs, you cannot do snapshots. Uh, QCOW you can, so that is a decision you can make. But let's call this new machine of ours TestWin. Yeah, well, let's say TestWin 10. And then this is the hard drive size. This is what I was saying. Okay. They, they say a 20 gig. I found uh, I do mostly, um, the, the, well, really the only reason I run uh, Windows is so that I can do some Visual Studio and Visual Studio code development uh, with C Sharp, Rust, and etc. Now, I found for me, for those kind of, um, or for that use case, 100 gig is good. But just for our demo, I'm just going to make it 30. Let's go to 30. And I'm allocating all 30. Finish on that. It's created it. And we select it. We go forward again. And I'll give it its name again. Uh, I can't remember what I called the other one, but test one, uh, sorry, test one 10, yeah. Okay, we're going to say... Customize configuration before install. The network install, I'm just going to leave on net. Now at this point, if we come and look at our CPUs, come to topology, uh, it might not give us access to all eight of these virtuals. We'll have a look at that. Then we're going to have to come and do a manual setup here. But for now, we'll just leave it on that. Now, the important thing is the SATA CD-ROM that is automatically attached to our new virtual machine contains our Win 10 ISO. But we need another ISO to have our uh, guest editions, if we can call them that, our Vertio drivers. So we need to come down here to add hardware and then add a new storage controller. And here where it says disk device, I select CD-ROM. Okay, we're going to mount it as a CD-ROM. You can go up to advanced options if you want, but it's such a small ISO, uh, speed is not really going to be an issue. So we say OK on that, finish. Click on CD-ROM2 here, and now we've got to select our ISO file. Come to Browse, and again, I'm going to say Browse Local, and we come to where we downloaded our ISO file from. It should be in our Downloads folder. There it is, 
double click on that you can copy that to where you want it to be and then click from there and uh, apply uh, yeah apply that so it's made that little change now this is where we must do a few things up front and this is where we select the vert IO drivers so if we come to our SATA disk come to advanced options our disk bus is vert IO now I used to use SATA but I, that just before I came across the vert IO drivers and uh, this made a massive difference so we select vert IO our storage format is raw yes you can come here and change your caching mode and so forth that does make a speed difference as well maybe you want to go to unsafe and uh, that that does make a bit of a difference on our network on oops, uh, apply that so yes uh, when we come to the network we also want to change our device model to vert IO then my video I'm leaving on Q, uh, again so yes to save those changes the video I'm leaving on Q, uh, QXL I haven't done much research into the video because I'm not particularly worried about how fast my video is in my virtual machine but uh, you can maybe fiddle with that as well and that's basically it so we can now start the installation we begin install now it's busy creating the virtual machine for us and then it'll boot up change the view to resize to the virtual machine all right and you select your default whatever you need over here the problem is what's going to happen now is it's trying to talk to our hard drive and it doesn't have the drivers to talk to our vert io hard drive so this is where we need to install the drivers i'm not going to put in a product key I'll just say i don't have a product key so i'm just going to select normal windows 10 pro accept the license terms and now we do our custom install and i've always been confused about <laughs> this install of windows there is nothing on our hard drive which we're installing to but its default is to upgrade what are you upgrading you know and custom is to install a new window it's crazy okay so we go to custom now it cannot detect our hard drive so we come over here to load driver and we have to now browse for it so we click on browse and we look at see it's got two uh, uh, cd-rom drives that is detected here and uh, in our case cd drive e contains our vert io win 10 iso we click on that and inside there uh, i'm doing an amd64 install so it's amd64 and then w10 for windows 10. all right we want to install everything the entire hard drive so we just say next All right, let's start with the region that's right okay we'll just accept the united states keyboard is fine you do not have access to a network at this point in time because of the fact that you're using a vert io or want to use a vert io driver so we say i don't have an internet have an internet and then continue with limited setup you can't connect now because we don't have internet access so continue with limited setup Okay, what I normally do is I turn off all these things, but you can decide what you want to do. All right, and there we have Windows uh, is installed, or maybe later here on uh, Crow on Edge. Okay, right mouse click on the Start button, come up to what was it, uh, Device Manager. All right, if we come over here to other devices, Ethernet controller, right mouse click on that and say update driver, browse my computer for drivers. And here we're going to have to again select our ISO where our vert IO drivers are. So remember it was drive E in this case, so vert IO in there. And you just say, you select that and then say OK. So this will now give us access to the internet. Say so yes, we install that. So Windows has updated that. Then we need to. Uh, so now I don't want it to be discoverable. Okay, so it'll set a few things up in the background here. Now we come over to Display Adapters and this Microsoft Basic Display Adapter. Right, let's click on that. Also, Update Driver. 
browse my computer we know it's on drive e now so we can just say next okay so now we have our video sorted and our network sorted so you can close that down i'm just going to uh, maximize this and change the display settings and there we have it okay so now you can go and customize it well activate it and customize it and do whatever you want yes it's quite quick oh what we can quickly do i sort of interested say to see how i detected my uh, cpu there so it's only two so to sort that out i mean i haven't actually done tests to see if there's real really a difference between actually showing windows my eight virtuals versus it only detecting two is there a speed difference i don't know but we're going to have a quick look at that so if we come over here to the machine settings and we select our cpu we can come to topology and manually set it and i have one socket and four cores and eight threads okay and we need to then of course save that apply that so when we restart our machine now we will have hopefully all our cores available so let's shut down uh, oh our current allocation must be on eight okay so and then let's uh, save that apply that and start up again and now we shouldn't have any problems does already feel a little bit snappier so yeah there's all our cores okay so I think I'll make another video at some point where I'm actually going to compare the speeds of where it takes for instance only uh, one virtual core uh, versus all eight of them but that's time for another video as we all know over time Windows slows down and every time I install a virtual machine do some work in it after a few months it starts slowing down and after a while it just irritates me like crazy I haven't been running uh, the Virtai drivers all that long, but it seems to be doing very well. My performance increase compared to my other options that I was using uh, to try and speed Windows up is at least four times faster, which is drastic. I mean, that, that's really good. Well, let's do a proper shutdown. And uh, I say thank you, guys, and see you in my next video.